Okay, so welcome to uh, what we're hoping to be a long series of virtual artist talks. Uh, we are going to be talking to Tim Schiffer today, who is in our current exhibition. I am Elise Vernon. I am the uh, gallery manager here at Olson Larson Galleries. This is Susan Watts, the owner of the gallery. Uh, right now, our current exhibition is the annual small and large work show, uh, which Tim is included in. Um, and so we're just going to ask him some questions about his process and his kind of background in art um, and take it from there, have a conversation. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Tim to introduce him. Um, Tim was interested in art on a, at a very early age. His mother encouraged that, uh, raised on a ranch in northern Wyoming. And then he made his way to Yale to get his BA in art after that University of California, Santa Barbara. And then for eight years, he was a lecturer in art and the gallery director of the College of Creative Studies, which was an independent program within the university. Uh, 1993, he was named the curator of the, excuse me, the Museum of Ventura County in Ventura, California. And then we are so lucky that he made his way to Iowa and became the director of the Figgy Museum in Davenport, um, which he served from 2012 to 2019, he retired. So we were, we had the pleasure of making Tim's acquaintance mm -hmm. uh, due to one of our artists, Randy Richmond, mm -hmm. a photographer who we've represented for several years. He put Tim's name out there and then Tim contacted us about a year and a half ago, two years ago. So, um, I just, when I was looking over your bio, Tim, I was kind of very curious about the fact that your interest in art was fostered at such an early age and that it continued uh, throughout your career and is still continuing. So can you tell us a little bit about your earliest memory of engaging with art? Well, I was just always interested in art and I grew up on a cattle ranch, so it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of art around except that my mom had studied art. My parents were both from New York. Okay. So they had studied art and my mom painted watercolors. So she kind of got me started. And then every now and then we would go back east. So I would go to museums, but um, I went to a one room schoolhouse. I mean, it's like a vanished world that I grew up in. Um, but then, you know, then I ended up studying art and it was always my passion. And I, you know, I thought I would become an artist and live in New York and do all that. And then I realized that that, that probably wasn't going to happen. And I actually didn't like New York that much. So, so I lived most of my life on the West Coast. Okay. And I just, I really just happened to have the opportunity to start running a gallery at the College of Creative Studies at UC Santa Barbara. And I, I loved curating. And then from there, I got started on museum work. And um, so I feel really fortunate to have had that career. And now I feel really fortunate to be able to return to painting um, full time. I mean, I kept it up a little bit along the way, but it's hard when you have kids and you're working to really focus on art. Sure. Yes. So, so now I, I paint every day and it's, it's, Wonderful. Yeah. Nice. So you said that your mother did watercolors. That kind of what led you down that path to pursue painting and then really develop watercolor after that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, she painted. And so I started out, um, oh, in high school, I would do plein air painting and go out and, and do painting. And um, in college, I did oil painting, I did sculpture, I did printmaking. I took a lot of art history. Um, and one of the great things of going to school on the East Coast was that we could go into New York on the weekends and go to the museums and all the galleries. And so, um, you know, the, the paintings that I put in my paintings now, the, you know, the famous paintings are really kind of a reflection of my passion for art and museums that I've had all my life. And so it's, it's 
you know, in a way to reproduce a painting like that is a way of kind of honoring the paintings, but also just learning them because when you copy a painting, you really get to understand how it works. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's been an added bonus of the work I'm doing now is that I really, I get to really look carefully at a lot of paintings that I, that I love. Yeah, and it, you know, when I first saw your work, Tim, it was really fun to see those references to art history. I'm a, I have an art history degree, and so I, and the, uh -huh. I loved, I loved studying it. I loved those long classes with, in the mm -hmm. big auditorium with the slideshows. There's a lot of oh, yeah. students that did not, but I really enjoyed those. So mm -hmm. it was just fun yeah. to see some of those, uh, some of those masterpieces in your masterpieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so um, you, um, I don't really, I really go by visually what I want to do. I don't put a message in the paintings. Okay. Um, sometimes there are, there's kind of a, sometimes there are jokes between several different paintings in the same painting or the way people, the directions people are looking um, are, are part of the composition of the painting. But I kind of, I really like representational painting. I mean, I, I like all kinds of art, but I like the challenge of doing representational painting, but I also try to make paintings that have an abstract composition that that is the basis for the painting. So um, a lot of times the composition of the artworks that I'm including is because of the way they work with the rest of the painting. And then the relationship subject wise kind of comes along after that. Sure. And I, some of the, the perspective on some of them is interesting because you aren't sure exactly what sort of plane that you're looking at mm -hmm. because you're right. reproducing something two dimensional, but then including three dimensional objects. So it's an interesting right. interplay. <laughs> yeah, that's what I play with. And so when I stage them, because I do them from life, but it usually takes me about as much time to stage the painting and get what I want as it does to actually paint the painting. Sure. I mean, it's kind of like an iceberg where there's as much underneath. And yeah. so I try to make it look like it just happened, but it didn't just happen. Yeah. And so I, um, I tilt the, the, the floor plane different ways to, to change the angle of vision. And because like you said, it's it's like a little game because you have a horizontal surface and a vertical surface mm -hmm. but when the painting's done it's all one vertical surface so there's a little game between um illusion of space and flat surface that is part of what i like to play with mm -hmm. um, yeah and there's so. a mastery there i mean i can't I, I, watercolor is always watercolor itself is hard enough and <laughs> yeah. to add that like you said, that interplay between the... Yeah, I'm always, every, every painting, I try to challenge myself. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and so some of them, it's like, oh, you're going to put a Vermeer in that. Okay, you know, good <laughs> luck with that. And, um, but I like, you know, the fruit, I, I, I like the fruit. I, did, I used to do just straight fruit paintings, you know. But, and then I did leaf paintings when I started to get back to painting because when I was working, I needed a setup that would just stay day, you know, because I only had a few hours here and there to work. Um, and then I, then one day I started adding these postcards into the leaves, and I was like, "Wow, that's a whole different. It's like two dimensions colliding." And so that's what led to these paintings. Um, although now I'm not doing the leaves as much; I'm more into the fruit. But, <laughs> but uh, I have to have some that lasts pretty well, you know. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Sure. So should we look at the example images that you sent us and have you kind of go through those? Sure, if you want. Yeah, this is a painting that's in the gallery now, actually, that usually, uh, usually I'll, I'll start and I'll try to remember to photograph it every day, but this one I actually did yeah. photograph it day by day through the, through the process, so. And I photographed the setup, too. Hmm. Yeah, we start with that image. Let me pull it up here. Oops, there we go. Yeah, that's what I painted from. Um, so that took me a few days to get to that. So I do sketches and then I do drawings 
And um, if I commit to do a painting, I have to make sure that that I want to that it's that it holds my interest enough sure. to work on it for a week or so. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm a, one thing about watercolor is that the the paper is such a beautiful surface. Yeah. And I I kind of have this sort of I don't know, it's almost like a superstition that I never want to waste a piece of watercolor paper. Yeah. So before I commit to a piece of paper, I really want to make sure that the idea of the painting is going to, is going to be worth the trouble that I put into it. So this is what I ended up with to start with for that painting with, um, with the Picasso, the Vermeer, the Miro, and then uh, Madame X by John Singer Sargent. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then I'm going to... So this is the drawing um, that I transfer onto the watercolor paper. Mm -hmm. And um, if you erase on watercolor paper, the paint, it won't take the paint the same way as if it's just fresh paper. Yeah. So I, I try to eliminate all the questions before I transfer the drawing onto the paper. Mm -hmm. So then I just um, basically trace this onto the paper to start the painting. Okay. okay. This is a drawing. This is the last drawing that I did before I did the, the template for the painting. Okay. Um, and it's, it takes a while, you know, like when you're copying some of these paintings to get the proportions right and yeah. figure it all out. It, it takes a while just to make it all fit into the right size piece of paper. Yeah, and all that. Especially when you're, again, mixing those 2D and 3D things, getting the proportions and the spacing and make sure, yeah. <laughs> making sure everything fits. I'm sure. And I've really learned, you know, in doing these paintings, even just like drawing an apple, it's not just a circle. They're so, it, you know, and, and when I copy things, I see how carefully things are drawn, like by Picasso or Matisse. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've really learned a lot about drawing in the last couple of years. Um, I was lucky because I studied figure drawing, so I have that, sure. that skill set. Um, which just takes practice. Yeah. But um, it's uh, it's challenging. Yeah, getting down those spatial relationships takes work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So this is when I start the painting. Once I've transferred the drawing onto the sheet, then I really just rough in the colors and the shapes, and um, and that just that's just. So I kind of know where everything is, and it um, it gets the first layer onto the paper, and the paper kind of changes once you start painting on it. Sure. But it, I also have to identify all the areas of the painting that I want to stay white, uh -huh. because um, that's one thing that about watercolor is once once you go dark, you can't. The only way to go black to go back to white. Is to scrape it off, or else you can use white paint. But I don't, I don't do that. Okay. So you have to really know what sure. what you want to be white in the end. Sure. Okay. Very intentional. Yeah. Okay. So, like at this point, I'm not. I don't worry too much about niceties. I I really just try to block it in and 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 then start to get the relationships going. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you a question that if we were at an artist talk here, I know someone in the audience would probably ask, is time. I think people are always interested in how much time things like this take. Mm -hmm. So like that first layer of watercolor, is it? Um, I usually work in three or four hour okay. segments. Sure. One, one thing about watercolor is you really have to be present when you're doing it because you, you can really screw a painting up and um, so usually three or four hours, sometimes the first layer and like transferring the drawing and putting in the first layer takes quite a while. It takes a full day, um, you know, it, it just depends. But uh, even though it looks really loose, it, it takes quite a while to, to get that in. Sure. But usually I can work, you know, after four or five hours, I'm, I, I need to go outside and do something else. Yeah. <laughs> and you need to look at the painting too. You need to, um, 
you know, I think in your brain, there's a visual side to your brain that is completely separate from your verbal side. And so you just have to look at the painting and let that visual side of your brain figure out what, what, you're, what you're doing. Because there are things in the paintings that I don't even see until pretty far along about what the relationships are and the, sure. the different shapes. But I think my visual mind knew all along. It's just I didn't pick up on it. Oh, yeah. later. You have to catch up to yourself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you have to let yourself be yourself. Sure. <laughs> That's hard. <laughs> it is hard. Yeah, no kidding. So, so then usually what I do is I try to um, start to work out the dark and light relationships and, and bring in the darks. And, and get the edges between the forms um, crystallized so that, so that the painting really starts to take shape. And I can see, I can see any problems with the drawing and, and um, I can start to see what the, what the dark to light relationships are in the painting. Mm -hmm. and, and usually then um, after that, then I start to develop the colors more. But, um, you know, paintings are, there's the composition, there's the light and the dark, and then there's the color. Mm -hmm. And so you have to have all three of those synced up if for it to really work in, yeah. in this kind of painting, you know. Um, sure, and I mean, so. especially with the, you know, the different postcards or different pictures, they all have such different feels to them, mm -hmm. completely different artists. Right. So just switching between all those, I think it's just a yeah. thing to think about. Yeah. And I try not to be too anal about like the Miro, you know, it, there's so much going on in that painting that sure. I really just tried for a pretty close approximation and called it a day. <laughs> yeah. well, but I liked when I, when I set the painting up, I liked that the woman in the Vermeer painting is playing a mandolin or a lute. Mm -hmm. And then the, the Miro painting is taken from a Dutch painting by Jan Steen, and, and the figure is playing a lute. Wow. Um, and then I liked that Madame X is just kind of looking at them. Sure. Um, so I try, I think I like paintings that where the activity of the painting goes all the way to the edges and goes to all four corners. Yeah. And, and it sort of forms an X in the composition. Sure. Mm -hmm. There's, yeah. So then, then I start to, to really flesh out all the elements of the painting and um, the, the, you know, get the colors to the right um, depth. And um, it takes, it, it, I, I work in a lot of layers, like some of the paintings will have, you know, 10 or 12 layers of paint. Mm -hmm. And with watercolor, just if you want to get really dark, um, colors, you, you really have to do that. And so, um, so I try to work the whole painting. Like if I do like, basically each of these pictures is one day of painting. Mm -hmm. So usually in a day of painting, I will have repainted the whole painting from, you know, sure. every part of it, except for the whites. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's yeah. just the way I, that I work. I think that's interesting that maybe not a lot of people would know about watercolor because you kind of have this idea of watercolor being a, a light kind of washy, you know, type of thing with not a lot of clearly defined edges of objects or even the colors sure. in looking at your paintings versus other watercolors are so saturated. So now that you're saying it, you know, it takes several layers upon layers to get this color. Um, it's all kind of coming together, at sure. least for me. Sure. And I know that some some of the people who have seen the pieces in the gallery have commented on that as well. Like these are watercolor. It's the colors are so saturated and and um, have so much more depth than mm -hmm. than you would have thought. So yeah. yeah, yeah, it's lots of layers, and you know, watercolor. I mean the the. The classic watercolor is very loose, and the and the colors flow together, and it, and they're really beautiful. It's, but I do a different. I just use much less water, yes. I guess. And um, 
but I mean, I've done oil painting, I've done tempera painting. Um, one thing I like about watercolor is that it's a very linear process. Mm. And so it's like once you've set the composition, you can't really change it unless you want to start a new painting. Whereas with oil paint, you can scrape it off and go back and do this and that. But watercolor is very linear. It, it, you, you start at point A and then you end up at point Z and the painting either succeeds or not. And I just like that thought process, you know, that, um, that you set up your challenge and then you work through it in a very linear way. Do you think that says something about your personality at all? <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I'm a Capricorn. <laughs> but I've done, I, you know, I used to do watercolors plein air and where it's, it's a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I'm still fascinated by the idea of, of realism in painting. And I, and I know that, you know, painting is, it's, you know, it's a technology that's completely antediluvian at this point, but I just think it's, it's fascinating um, to, to create an illusion and, and um, to take a, take a plain white piece of paper and turn it into something that, that is so complex. Sure. And, I, and then for me, that's what attracted me to your work, Tim. I mean, it was just, uh, yeah, it was just such a, like I said, a masterful painting and it was just kind of refreshing to mm -hmm. see you know I mean we we have traditional work here definitely um but we didn't we we're not representing any watercolor artists right now and it just was like oh this is a and, and like I said before the homage to our history and it's just a mm -hmm. we don't have anything like it so it was fun to show along with yeah. the other work that we have in the show yeah Thanks. so I think the last image is installation show. oh yeah I'm switch <laughs> to that <the> last image <laughs> Yeah. yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, framing on the wall. <laughs> uh huh. So the one uh, in the middle, can you tell us about that one just a little bit? Yeah, that's actually one of my favorite ones. So that one has um, the Milkmaid by Vermeer, mm -hmm. and it has Stone City by Grant Wood, which is is just a wonderful painting. And so, um, and then it has the the oranges and the Granny Smith apples. And actually that one, the original idea for that one was just the idea of one pedestal, whatever you call that, chalice thing, mm -hmm. upright and one tipped with the stuff falling out of it. And so the idea was really a spatial idea. And so then I, you know, I moved stuff around a lot and, you know, part of what I rely on is what I have in the books that I have. Um, and so I had this, I have this Vermeer book. And um, when I, when I found the, the milkmaid, I thought her gesture really kind of mimicked the gesture of the oranges falling out of the, of the chalice. Mm -hmm. And then the um, stone city has this river going through it that I thought they, they just, they made a funny combination. And then I, I put them on a on kind of a paisley tablecloth that to try to make the background come forward too so the 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 whole surface of the painting was animated. Mm -hmm. So um, that one that's one of my favorite paintings actually that I've done in the last year. Yeah, we love that one a lot. <laughs> Vermeer is, I mean, there are certain painters that did almost perfect paintings and he's one of them. He's, uh, when, you, when you go and draw um, what he did and the way he made light fall on objects is, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. It really is, he, he was amazing. Yeah, it's something else. <laughs> yeah. So I think we just have one more question mm -hmm. for you. Um, so most, if not all, of your career has been focused on art in some capacity. So I know this is kind of a loaded question with lots of different answers, <laughs> but from your perspective, how would you define a successful artist? Um, 
Well, I mean, I think artists um, should enjoy doing what they do or it should fulfill that need. Um, I mean, I look at all different kinds of art and I'm interested in all different kinds of art. And usually I try to have the attitude that if it was worth the trouble for the artist to do the piece and put the energy into it, mm -hmm. then I should honor that by trying to understand what it is they're doing. Sure. And so, um, obviously I like craft, but um, if, if an artist, if I see that they have really put form to an idea or an emotion, I think that's successful. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess I'm kind of the A for effort school of our criticism <laughs> of, you know, I'll, if, if it was worth it for you to do it, then I'll take the trouble to try and understand what you're doing. Sure. But, um, you know, I, I love abstract painting. Um, I, some kinds of conceptual art I really find interesting. Um, and when I, when I worked in museums, really, it, you know, I really just tried to present art that I thought um, would create dialogue in, in, in our audience. Um, so it was all over the place. And, yeah. um, I'm not, I don't think there's one right way or wrong way. And, <laughs> um, you know, watercolor, you know, I, I, I like to think that if, if I went out to do like the most, um, transgressive kind of art that you could do in today's art world, doing still lifes of watercolor is like <laughs> the, that's like the last thing anybody would suggest that you do because it's like, so such a pariah of art, you know, but, um, but I like it and I, you know, it's, it's also something that you can pick up and put down that you can take with you and, sure. um, and, and I like, I think people respond to craft. So, so I like that. Um, I, I, I like the idea of trying to, to make myself a master of a craft. And, and so I try to get better with each one. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully, I have a future doing that. I know there's <laughs> endless possibilities out sure. there. Yeah, it, I mean, it kind of sounds like one of the foundational things that you're talking about is communication, right? Yeah. Like communicating the craft, communicating uh, a feeling or a thought that you're wanting to convey through the artwork. Um, so I feel like that's successful if you're communicating to somebody, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I try, I mean, I like realism too, because I think anybody can look at a realist painting and they, you know, they'll go, oh, it looks just like a picture by which they mean a photograph. But yeah. I think I, I like the idea of creating a painting where somebody looks at it and they go, oh, I know what that is, but there's more to it than they necessarily realize right away, yeah. you know? Like there's, and, a simple, there's a simple access point, but then uh -huh. it kind of goes further. Exactly, exactly, yeah, yeah, so. Well, anything it. else you want to let people know about or add? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm honored and thrilled to be in the gallery and to be in this show, so thanks for your support. And, yeah, thank you. Um, thanks for participating. We've yeah. loved having your work on the wall. Absolutely. Thanks, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I hope people enjoy they have so far. Hearing about it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> part of the okay. Why we do things like this, you know, yeah. to tell people about all of the great artwork that we have on the wall, the people who made the artwork and why. Um, and it just helps to kind of build connections and, and you know, more awareness and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, totally. um, and I love that you guys show a really wide variety of art. I mean, I think that's so many galleries get into one little narrow look and and i think it's great to bring all different kinds of art to people you know good yeah so thank you yeah of sure. course thank you so thanks so much tim for taking the time out to join us today
And I think for everybody tuning in eventually, um, just visit our website, olsonlarson.com. And we're on social media, Facebook and Instagram. We update that a little more regularly so you can <laughs> see some behind the scenes of what we work on at the gallery. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll keep on doing this with, with other artists as well. So thanks again, Tim. Great, thank you. Thanks, Tim. Bye. 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 Okay.